Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just going to introduce myself quick. I'm Alicia. I'll be helping with your chat today. If you need any tech questions or you get locked out of the Zoom, um, something's going on that you need a little bit of support with, just feel free to reach out in the chat um, and enjoy today's session. Thank you, Alicia. They are one of my favorite people in all of the Zoom period, <laughs> pandemic period that I've met. Super helpful. I'm very grateful for everything that you do for us. So welcome everyone. If you haven't already, please um, check that it's your actual name on on your on your name thing <laughs> and where you are connecting from. It's always a, a great way to to connect and, and figure out who our community is, which is a part of what we do here in, in both in UIP and in the embodiment unlimited group in general. It's definitely one of the things that I value the most. So I'm super happy because of that to be able to host these kind of sessions. I know it's closing. We're nearing the end of these live integration sessions. I think it's just one or two left. So if you have questions, this would be a great time to bring them up. Um, I think you have Karen. Uh, yeah, for sure you have Karen before closing and there might be another session before before that. I'm not, not entirely sure. So I want to know, you could unmute or write it up on, on the chat. Where are you on, on your EYP training? Did you buy the package but not start it already? Are you already halfway through? Are you done? <laughs> and want this to start again. Of course, there's no, this is not your classical school, so there's no right answer. Midway, but it and met with my small group once. Okay. Barely started, looking to continue to the game. Okay, yeah. Again, it's not that I want to pressure you at all, but uh, I want to know where you guys are so that I can get a feel of of what questions are, how deep we're going. On last group of Yin poses, doing coaching course. Oh, so you're closing, you're close to the end, June. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Been recovering from surgery, so have not started any personal practice yet. Have reviewed some of the online sessions started taking time with poses not yet okay so purchase course haven't begun yet wonderful okay so most of you are just in the beginning phase of your eyp training and i would love to know again this is not a question that's going to be graded it's not going to be on the test but what post has been the most revealing to you. You don't have to say why, you don't have to share anything that's too personal, but which posts have you seen, okay, I love this and this is giving me so much insight or I hate this and I never want to do it again. <laughs> and even like, I have to go to Mark and ask him, why is he putting this post in the, in the, in the catalog? He shouldn't. <laughs> so where, where's that? Where are you finding that, that not enough experience to comment care pose yeah one of the favorites this is definitely i've shared this before in our groups care is one of the ones that i that i use the most in my sessions with my clients to take take away because it's so easy to do anytime well this is self self-care right but even care it's it's a, another expression of it it's so easy to take home and do anywhere like even sitting on, you know, like the bus that I know we're not doing a lot of public transportation, but just doing this and nobody knows what you're doing, but you're actually doing a little bit of self care. And you're already putting yourself in the flow of, of and, or the effect of the pose. Inspiration, vulnerability. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. 
I think we usually have a post that we find I'm really good at it. Another one that I hate, like I said, like I mentioned, and along in between these poses, we also find those that are temporary. And what do I mean by temporary? At certain stages of life, we need certain things. So if I'm starting a, a new job, it would be it would make sense for me to explore entering a lot or taking up space or being seen because I'm going to be exercising that me personally, for example. Right. But if I'm ending a relationship, if I am moving, if I am going to another city or state, I may be practicing letting go or practicing self care. So it's not necessarily that that pose relates to you in essence or in personality, but it deals with a temporary situation that you're experiencing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's, it's really good to, to ask yourself, what do I need right now? What do I need today? And usually, um, whenever we, we have our own personal practice and we start building up on our personal practice, it's good to recognize which poses are the ones that I'm, I'm, why am I picking the poses that I'm picking? Do you guys know that it's recommended when you're doing the EYP training to have a personal practice, right? You guys have read that? Yeah. <laughs> Like every day at least, or every two days, I don't know. Yeah, good. Okay, if you haven't read it, it's somewhere there. <laughs> so what does that mean by personal practice? Ideally one pose, I would say like two or three for, for your everyday practice. And be mindful, why am I choosing the ones that I choose? Because they're easy? Because they don't represent the challenge? Because they're things that I do already? Or is it some, and that's, it, there's nothing wrong with that, but of course we, we want to find like a nice sandwich, right? So something that feels good, that I enjoy, something that's challenging and that I want to work through and some, something that's totally unknown to me and I'm going to explore this stuff. For me, I don't know, like enthusiasm is, is a post that feels like a weird language to me. I don't know. Maybe because I'm usually, I have no idea, <laughs> honestly, but it's it, it all, always, and I've been doing this for a long time now, and it still feels that way. So this would be in that part of my sandwich, like that pose that I have to do because I want to explore whatever's going on there, but I also have that pose where I know um, what I need to practice. That's a challenge for me. So if I, again, at work, I'm working with a certain group of people that are difficult for me maybe i gotta be doing i have to be doing no pose so that once i go out and into the office it's easier for me to get into that energy yeah so that's why practice is helpful so that i do it in a safe place where i don't think do i look silly when i say no like what's gonna happen if i stand here do i look funny you can even look at the mirror. I mean, you can adapt your practice however you want. So that when you're actually doing no pose, like real no pose, not the YP one, but the actual life pose of no, you don't have to go through that questioning at that moment. Does that make sense? Like, what's gonna happen? Am I looking weird? Like maybe if I should, I was gonna say no to five sessions, but okay, I'll say no to two so that I seem nicer. That thing we can do in the mat. We can do when we're practicing. And you will notice it because you start relaxing your arm a little bit more so that no, instead of being like sturdy and firm, it's gonna be like, mm, so maybe, and your hands gonna start moving instead of like firm. Like, okay, yeah, okay, maybe. I'm saying no, but I'm trying to be super nice, you know, like with the face. Yeah. So that's why we, we like to do this every day. We, we want to get a whole experience of, so imagine that you're hiring a 
a, a cook for yourself, like a personal chef. You won this magically someplace. You went to Ellen, the, the Ellen show, and you won a personal chef. So you want to pick the person who cooks for you. And maybe one day they cook like the best thing in the world and they, they do a great thing, but maybe the next day it's not so great. So you, you want to hire them for like a week and see how they actually do things. So that's us as well. So one day, if I'm not super mad, I'm going to go into no post and I'm like, I'm super good at this. I don't have to do it and any, any, like, I don't have to practice it. But if I'm dealing with someone else, say my mother, which is a, a different subject, I'm like, so it, it's not representative. One time it's not representative of my whole ability to do the pose. Does that make sense? What am I doing with all of that I've been talking to right now? I'm trying to convince you to practice every day. That's what's gonna hook us to the practice and to this whole spiral of what EYP actually is, which is recognizing my state and being able to start stepping into the changes that that step asks me for. Yeah. How are we doing with this? Yeah. Of course, it's not, I'm not being like the teacher, like you guys are not doing your homework. Oh, no. We're inspiring you to start your practice. And of course we know it's difficult. We know it's not something that it's something new and we we're starting to, to get to know. Um, and the body, the body knows that if we're getting on the mat, we're going to start moving something, right? So the body might be resisting a little bit and that's okay. We just got to say like, yeah, but we actually have to do it, right? Okay, so... I'm going to pick... You guys mentioned care, inspiration, vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Okay, does anyone have a question so far? I want to start with a question. Those of you who've started, it doesn't have to be like the best, most complete, most insightful question. Usually the simplest questions also hold a lot of information. How long after practicing on our own do we bring it to others? Um, well, I would first go to like the official training period, which is I think you have to do like two, two workshops and your personal time. And then you gotta go to one of the, the teachers who do like the certification process. I would say, um, talk to them when you, when you're defining, like, should I start now? Because you get to, to do some of those hours for certification process, um, are with the public, right? You gotta do an offering so you gotta start working with, with people at some point i would say um when you know the poses and when you know both sides of the pose do you know what i mean by both sides of the pose okay so we're gonna start by practicing one pose that we that I know we haven't done in the integration these sessions these live sessions which is evaluation pose. Has somebody met this pose already? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and do this pose. Started. Started standing. Sorry. And this is this is part of the Yin poses. That means that. Um, I will adjust my, my camera so that you see my face in a second. I first want you to see my feet because the, 
the weight is gonna be on the left on the okay so left leg is on the back and we're gonna have most of our weight there the knee could be doesn't have to be super bent for this for this pose because we're gonna our spine is pretty much straight the chest is a little bit up, up upward I'm gonna get closer so that you see the upper part of the of the pose. So the chest is a little bit arched, the, the spine is a little bit arched so that the chest is looking up, not so much, but it's not collapsed as other other yin poses. And for the torso, one hand will go across the waist, just like this, and the other hand will go to, to your chin, so find some place where that rests there. And the chin can go like a little bit tucked in or a little bit raised up. Yeah. And as we come into the pose, notice how this feels in the body. Is there, is this uncomfortable? Or is it uncomfortable in a sense? Is this familiar? Where in my life am I doing these pose often? Where am I not doing this at all? What's the experience when I'm here? What's my experience? Do I recognize something when I'm here? What comes up for you? Now let's add, if you wanna shift your, your arms just to give them a little bit of space, you could also shift your, your legs. If your leg left leg was backward, you can shift your weight sorry shift the leg so that your weight is always on the back leg but now the right one if you if you wish because we're gonna add a little bit of like a cherry on top and it's a very slight adjustment but i really love the effect of it and it's it's the mouth so usually in this evaluation pose it's like mm. and notice what the difference between a relaxed mouth smiling and hmm you could actually do that hmm mm. how does that change the experience in your state notice if something's coming up and of course always practice self-care this sounds very simple as all of EYP poses seem so in innocent, but at the end of the day, they can bring up a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's take a breath as we come out of the pose and get ready to come back. If this was in any way emotionally challenging, take as you're coming back to the screen, take one or two seconds to allow yourself a little bit of care yeah so you know in after every eyp pose we like to do a debrief so 
I like the word debrief, even though it's not a word that I use often, but I like to keep using it for EYP because we want to make debriefing short. So what came up for you in one or two words or a very short sentence, something that you would like to share? What was that experience like? What came up for you? You could also use your voice if you want. Difficult. I didn't. So I didn't do the pose with you just then, but I did it before, and unfortunately, it's super comfortable. <laughs> okay, thank you. Which is not good. Very familiar, natural. I do this pose often in my day to day. Difficult to get the feeling of it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, June, for for sharing that. We may we may get to that in um, after we we finish this because it's a very very good question what happens when i cannot get the feel of it because this can happen in any pose right and this can happen to our clients or our students with mouth tight more distance from what watching with smile more connected making a joyful decision when i open my mouth i lost the feeling of the pose just kind of went blank yeah yeah it's it's part of the package, right? The mouth. I also felt like I'm done with evaluation. Time for action. I started evaluating what furniture to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it went full mode, full on mode. I felt judgmental often, so it feels comfortable. I tend to be critical of myself and others. Wonderful. Thank you. So now remember the question before we we got into the pose. What does it mean to know both sides of the pose? So when is evaluation helpful? Why is it good? Why would it be useful? Hmm. We are doing it right now. Why would it be useful? Careful about decisions. Yeah, discernment, right? What else? What's useful about being in evaluation pose? It brought me back to my energy to evaluate. It's finally helped me relax. No rush decisions, yeah. Could help with impulsivity, that's for sure. Why do we need that energy to evaluate? Why do we have it in our toolkit? When trying to make a decision, we can also overdo it by staying in evaluation and not... Yeah, we're going to go there next. Right now we're on the good side of evaluation. So it helps, helps us to actually think about stuff and decide, is this what I want? Is this good for me? Is this good for the community? Is this benefiting in a sense? And benefited, I don't mean like, is this productive or not? It also, like, do I really want this? Is this going to bring me pleasure? I have to do this all the time because I get sugar cravings in the afternoon all the time. So I really, like, do I really want this? <laughs> yeah. So it makes me, make me, makes me take smarter decisions, right? Doesn't mean that I'm only going to be like super strict and no sugar ever in the in, in your life again so like sometimes it's okay but that has to come from from evaluation very familiar standing and being in my body felt joyful closing the mouth i noticed the tension and shutting down in the body in an unbalanced way this has been where and how i get stuck in my head yeah yeah this, uh, this there is a very cultural element in in judgment we feel safe in judgment right because we're standing back yeah, but we're gonna we're gonna head head over to the other side next. Um, another good thing about evaluation, it helps us grow, right? So like, why did I do that thing that I did last night? Did I respond in the best way? Was I really that mad? 
did that person really screw up? Was was my reaction proportionate? Proportionate? Yeah. To to what the other person did. What am I doing there? Reflecting, bringing awareness, adding consciousness to my life, to my actions, to my behaviors. And this all goes through an evaluation process, like standing back and not going with the rush of whatever life's bringing in front of me, right? And it allow that allows me to to be able to, to say, okay, yeah, yeah, that was right. And then confirms me and I know that I'm on the right path and I go can go ahead. Or yeah, I actually I may have overreacted. There could have been a better way to respond to that situation. And that comes from evaluation. Yeah. So we don't hate it, right? It's it's there for some reason. What's the other side? I know you guys will feel more familiar with shaming, shaming, evaluation. Why do we not, when is it not helpful? When does it bring its dark side out to play? when you use it too much yeah what happens if we used evaluation too much overly cr critical of self and others yes yes becoming highly critical that's not great right enough criticism for awareness and change of action good too much criticism doesn't necessarily go very well right because it gets on gets us on a negativity vision can't see joy yeah when you use it to avoid engaging and taking action yeah 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 like um for example you know there's there's a name and I actually thought of this today for some other reason but they coined the term for the, sorry, I call it now the Netflix effect, which is having so many options that you cannot choose. And what happens? You end up not choosing, right? <laughs> yeah, like it happens to me. I end up sleeping before I actually play something on Netflix because I'm stuck in the evaluation. I sometimes think of the earlier times. <laughs> when you, you had to watch what was on TV and you actually had to develop that adaptability muscle that we don't have to exercise as much right now, right? Or younger generations, they have to choose out of like a million things and you can have whatever you want, whenever you want. And now it's like, for us, it was like, you had to catch, Yeah, remember we used that phrase, like, did you catch it? The movie or the, the, the show now, you don't have to catch you now you choose so that's that's another side of evaluation right overthinking analysis paralysis yes from too much evaluation overly critical what happens when we're overly critical we forget to what we leave, we we take up space from what rest compassion yeah patience yes lots of things actually it's fun and i yeah yeah so imagine if we go to a, a party together and you get to sit next to me and i'm like you know this tablecloth cloth doesn't really match the 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 glasses that they're using and they should have chosen like better flowers because it's windy and then it's gonna be like all over the plates and that was not the smartest. Am I being fun to sit beside at a party? No, <laughs> because I'm missing the f the party, <laughs> right? The enjoyment. So we start taking up space from actual enjoyment. Missing the big picture. 
Yeah. How are you guys feeling with all of this? What's coming up? <laughs> Lost in the weeds. Yeah. So we are widening the context of a, a pose. All of the YP poses have both sides, like we just did. So, like a good side and a bad side. And I'm quoting this for anyone who's just on audio. I'm putting this on quotes because it's not necessarily that we want, we want to be able to know when it's hurting me and when it's benefiting me, me or the community. It's not that judgment is bad, get out of your head, we only, we only have one life. Yeah, and we got to keep that life. <laughs> so we got to use both of those, right? Yeah, so we use discernment as well. I am surprised about the positive experiences people have in this post. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll share one of the stories that I that I really loved about the uh, how this comment comes into play. The positive experiences um, people have in this pose. Choosing a partner. So, okay, wait. Like, okay, he's cute, but, hmm. Okay, you're nice, but wait. But are you also this? But are you also this that I need? And for those of us who have a big heart, <laughs> to put it in a nice way, we may overlook things and then we may, some people, um, get into relationships that at the end of the day you find that they're not, they, 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 you, you missed seeing things that you also are important for you and discernment comes into play. Like this was one of the things that I really, that was very helpful to me. So like standing back and like, Yes, I like you, but I also need to feel safe with you. Or like, I also have fun with you, but I also need to have to be able to talk to you seriously, you know? So again, and this thing that I'm just sharing takes me to, to another step that I go into with you guys, because you guys are being trained in EYP. And it's the fact that imagine if i don't take the time to give a space for the again good side and the bad side of each pose let's say evaluation and i was raised for example in a family who was very judgmental yeah so like if my mother would see me coming out when i was going out to a party or something she'd be like um there's like a a an a a hair coming out of your whatever, you know, or there's, it's, it's wrinkled. You shouldn't go out like that. So very judgmental, very into evaluation. If I have that background and I don't give myself time to recognize both sides of, of the aspect, if I come into the front of a class and teach about EYP, I'm going to go like, evaluation is so bad because it hurts people, because you should be spreading love and evaluation is bad. What am I doing there? What's happening there as a facilitator? This is very important. No boundaries. Bias taking over, yeah, yeah. In therapeutic terms, it's called a, a, a blind spot. And I'm gonna, like a person who needs evaluation, I'm gonna cut access to their path into evaluation. Yeah? Telling us what to think and how to experience the both, yes, yeah. And EYP actually is, is a very nice tool that allows for a widened perspective. We don't say we should go to not evaluation because everything should be love and everything should flow. Actually, no, like, do you need it? <laughs> go for that. 
Do you need less of it? Go for that. And those are the questions we use, remember? When we guide a, a, a person into the post, like where do you need more of this in your life? Where do you need less of this in your life? And we're not selling any of the poses. You should surrender more. If a person's like super surrender because that person was never given a chance to choose in their life, they already have surrender done. And they actually have to work the other way around. Yeah. What's coming up for you when you hear this? What's going on in your minds? What are the insights coming up? This is the fun side of being a trainer. <laughs> Love the where do you need me and where could you soften the question? Mm -hmm. yeah. where do you need this mm -hmm. yeah so that's the thing about finding both sides of the pose that's what I meant by both sides of the pose do you want to do another one of these somebody asked could we do, somebody said could we do another pose right so let's actually do um giving very simple what's the good side of giving why do we want it in our lives sharing mm -hmm. inclusivity yeah why is giving good generosity connection Mm -hmm. giving connects us to our purpose as human beings we need something that fulfills us and it's always a giving yeah whatever sense that takes you know <laughs> giving my time giving something that i actually like material stuff that i give but it's why am i here for in this world it's a giving so it helps us feel connected fulfilled useful all of those things it feels good yes <laughs> just for just for the sake of it feels good right yeah when is giving not so great over giving Overgiving can lead to burnout. Yes. No self-care. Yes. Yeah, we write this on the other side. Mm -hmm. Overgiving, burnout. No giving to self. Yeah, unbalanced, right? We want balance in lots of areas of our lives. Yeah. In a very, you know, I, I come from a family constellations background, so... One of the things that we talk about, if you don't want to hear this, you can totally dismiss it. But one of the pillars for relationships is being able to be in a giving and receiving balance for romantic relationships. So it is said in this philosophy, in this school of thought, that if we give too much in relationship, we're placing ourselves in the role of mother. And of course that's not going to be fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. And when we when we overgive, we make the other person well we don't yeah. We it happens both ways of course, but um it's not a partner anymore. It's not partnered. Yeah. Damn. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, so overgiving. Um 
there are other stuff that's not cool about giving. Let's let's explore it through the body, yeah? So that we, we get the sense also through the body. So let's go to giving pose. So giving, um, we're stepping into our front leg, most of our weight on the front leg, my knees bent and my arms are open. I'm going to shift that you can see it here. So giving. Notice how this feels in the body, if this is getting comfortable or uncomfortable, if this is familiar or not familiar. And let's see what overgiving feels like. And let's step it, our weight even more towards the front leg. So even my, my torso is, um, sliding forward and my arms are overextending. How does that feel like? And of course you can also do this if you're sitting, if you need a variation for sitting, you can do this just by lifting your arms wherever you're sitting. Because somebody mentioned that they're in recovery. I forgot to mention this earlier, but this can always be adapted, right? How does our overgiving feel? Yeah, tired. Yeah, yeah, or too familiar. <laughs> could, could, could go either way. <laughs> so now let's go back, shake it up a little so that your body is a little balanced. And let's, let's change the leg that we're using forward so that you can relax the other leg and have some ease there. And again, we're going to go into regular giving. So weight on the front leg arms extended outward and we're gonna like uh, not really like I want to give but I'm, I'm not really thinking of giving so like imagine when when you're invited to a party and you're asked to bring all of the expensive complicated heavy stuff and you're like oh, yeah no I don't want to do it I don't want to do that How does that feel? Comfortable, familiar. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a breath. <laughs> and ease back. Anyone want to share how that was, how that exploration was like? Did you notice something that you hadn't noticed before? What's receiving post versus I don't want to give post? Well, I don't want to give post doesn't really exist. It's just like giving, but, uh, but the body is constrained. Receiving is actually open and the arms are extended. Like there's actually something on your arms. Yeah. Also for receiving, yeah, elbows are bent, palms are open here and not like giving. A lot of energy required to resist giving. Yes, that's very interesting, right? Leaning forward of, or back, unbalanced and unsupported could topple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you can notice the unbalanced, right? Giving feels like my default is to overgive and overstretch. Yes. I would love to point out with this comment the cultural aspect of poses. Because I think both, both, both um, like for a mother, you're expected to overgive, and that's actually a good thing. 
Like she's so devoted. She doesn't even sleep at night. And that's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, I know that actually you cannot sleep at night, but the other thing is to actually like boast about it and be proud of my self-sacrifice. There's a line between a sacrifice that needs to be done and finding identity in that, right? So that overgiveness can be, um, how would you say that? When it's not, you don't see it for what it is. Yeah, because of a lot of cultural things. Yeah, like for a traditional male role who's like the provider and who works all day and all night, he has three jobs and blah, 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 blah. That's a good thing, right? But again, this has a lot of cultural, maybe even religious backgrounds that makes us think that that's a good thing. And who tells us, hey, that might not be the greatest idea? Who tells us that? Who, who's, who gives us a, a warning and another warning and then like this big alarm if we're not listening? The body, yay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that sounds so nice to be like the super giving mother, but you know what? Eh. <laughs> yeah. It feels so centered when in balance, it just is natural. Yes, yeah, yeah. I don't do it that often, but with people, when you when you when you give any way people's, it's nice to to play with the extremes so that you get a sense of oh, this is just right. That that's how it feels just right in the body, and experiencing that, it's also nice. Reinforcing what leads to burnout and disconnection. Yeah, that that overgiving feels big, right? Overgiving feels pushy. It is. Thank you for mentioning that, June. Actually, I, I told I told you guys that there were other things in this like dark side of overgiving, and that's manipulation. So that I give and give and give, so that you think and you give me the feedback that I'm a good person, and that I'm needed, and that I am necessary, and that you will never leave me alone if I overgive, right? So lots of plays coming under under that. Yeah. The praise of amusing yourself, the martyrs. Yes, exactly. Overgiving feels pushy. Yes, because we don't respect we're going into the sphere of other, right? Yeah. People pleasing and codependency. Overgiving is disempowering. Yeah, it is. Even when we don't feel that it's like that, right? In, in actual everyday life we don't notice that wonderful great i i i liked what's come up for for the session today how are you guys feeling yeah i really like going into the context of the pose there's a big big element of doing the actual pose because we're working through the body and the answers will come through the body but having the context, particularly as facilitators, give the space for that to be um, more digestible, more, more like useful and understood. But again, you got to know both sides so that you don't give like, yes, we should not be overgiving. Sometimes like, go ahead, like there go to the giving, you know, like you, you, you got it. You're ready. The word, the world needs what you have to share. And people stand back because they're shy, because they've been criticized a lot by these mothers, you know, like or fathers, um, and then they might shy away from giving. It feels a little bit too exposed. Yeah, we're afraid of rejection. So, it's also good to encourage giving, for some cases. Yeah, feels good. Wonderful. We have 10 more minutes. Is there any other questions that come up from your own practice, out of curiosity, if you haven't met this in your, in your material yet, or from today's session, something that came up? A 
I wonder how to tell the difference if someone is doing say yes pose or receive pose when they look right, but are they getting the feel feeling of the difference between these two? Yes or receive. Um, are they getting the difference? Um, let me think. There is an element of similarity between yes and receiving. Yeah? To start off. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to make sure that the person gets the nuance of one or the other, or more than the, we don't really need them to know the difference. We need them to feel the application of it. Yeah? So what one thing that you can do is guide the person. So like let's you you can ask them when on receiving post what does it what would it feel like if right now you would be getting like the person of your dreams what would it feel like if you get the check that you've always wanted to ask for in your job and you get it and you can actually place things on their hands so that they experience that yeah, so setting, props, and image. These things help setting the tone for, for a specific aim or outcome of the pose. Yeah. Quick logistics, logics, uh, sorry, logistics question. How, how, to, how do we find or join a small group? I actually don't know because <laughs> I'm, I'm not part of the organizing team, but I know. Oh, thank you. Um, so they don't set them up. There's just a group. There's a Facebook post that you're, they were posting like the time zones and then we were just doing it ourselves. So if whatever time zone you were interested in, you were supposed to go back and look and see if anyone else was or you could list it and then people ask you could see. So it's not like a arrange, it's a do it yourself kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So the Facebook group. Um yeah. Uh, also if you message Steve, he'll he'll guide you to where you need to find this. When coaching someone, do you recommend starting with discussion like you did today before getting into poses or doing some activity like breathing, movement, relaxation? I would say like a standard would be first movement. If I have like a lot of time and I feel like the group is like if I if I feel that I can do whatever I want, basically. <laughs> I would start with a very brief introduction of the concept, being very mindful to not, not give a bias. Like we're gonna do no pose and yeah, you should be doing no because boundaries and nobody will ever cross your back, you know. Being mindful of not doing that, but giving a sort of like a, a a very brief introduction so that people can feel connected also intellectually. Then I go into the post, maybe offer one or two examples. And after that, I would do a wider discussion like we just did. And then if I have the time, I would go back to the post with all of this stuff um, in our awareness. Yeah. Good enough, Mandy. Is this what you, yeah? That's my, my ideal setting. Yeah. Of course, the tricky part is to, to build that introduction without going into the tendency of, of one over the other. So being mindful of my own like pre personal preference towards one or the other or cultural, right? Like, yes, giving because everyone needs us and we should be of service and we should be of help. And that's like our mission in the end, end of the day. <laughs> maybe yes, maybe no. So, yeah. So we're five minutes um, for closing. Uh, I would love to hear insights from today, takeaways. 
you could open up your mics or type it in the chat, however you prefer. Play with extremes, yeah. This has been lovely. Good to see more of both sides of things. Yes, yes. It's always a great exploration, right? See, same seeing the flip side of what's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, any more insights? What are you taking from today's one hour EYP integration session? If you want to keep uh, typing those insights, I will be very happy to read them. And we're going to jump into the next question, which is, which pose are you ready to practice? One, one pose. That's the day you realize I need to do this pose. Seeing both sides and being neutral was really helpful. Yeah. Thank you, Susan. Learning just right place for the pose, it's sensitive. Yes, thank you, June. Discernment and seeing the positive aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. I love the word discernment, yeah. When am I being discer discerning? When am I being judge highly judgmental, right? More awareness of how to use the poses. Wonderful, yes, that was my aim today. Thank you, Kara. Yeah. So, which pose are you taking for your next days for your practice? One pose can bring up a wide variety of reactions from different people. Yeah, that's why we don't want to say like, this is the good thing or this is where we should be going. Depends. Depends. An overboundaried person that's like, I don't allow anyone in my life now. You know, like, like um, I have like a thousand you know, like non-negotiables in my people to date list. So no post is like soften, right? But for a person who's like, yeah, I'm over giving, like no post and they're gonna be like doing it, you know, like very soft without always smiling, like very relaxed. Then that person should be going towards no, right? And again, should. So there's not really like the thing Okay, so self-care, evaluation pose, both no and yes. Okay, wonderful. So it's been very nice. I, I enjoyed this late afternoon for me um, with you guys. I'm very glad that it's been helpful for, for some of you at least. And hopefully that you can start integrating this in your practice. Feel free to ask questions. Uh, uh, I'll be there around some sometimes I check the EYP um, Facebook group so I might might get a chance especially if you tag me for sure I'll see it so okay have a nice rest of the day you guys and thank you Alicia thank you